first things first, um, just uh, so that you know a bit about myself. Um, so my name is Lenore Bondile. I'm based in Joburg. I'm currently working for one of the best um, software companies um, I've ever worked with, uh, PVP. Um, so initially, I started off my career as a software developer, um, and then I transitioned into software architecture. And then currently, I'm the engineering lead um, for DVP. So I've got um, uh, 10 plus years experience in, in software uh, development currently, um, with uh, vast um, experience in different industries, um, from consulting, um, to retail, to banking, um, to the government sector. So um, that experience, I think, has taught me a lot um, within the IT space. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I've luckily I've been able to get um, some of the few badges that people um, go out there and get and review. So I am um, actually certified. So the agenda for today, um, just break it down for you. Um, we just keep thinking about interactive um, which um, one can target um, when you think about doing a migration. Um, and then we're going to be looking at the famous five of migration at different phases. And um, migrate overview, looking at how it actually looks and how you can go about doing the actual migration. And uh, we're going to look at database. Uh, web app migration, and if time allows, we can even look at some server migration, and then we'll close up the session. So, just an int introduction um, uh, cloud migration. So, in this webinar, so I want to talk about moving from on premises to Azure. Um, there are a lot of individuals and companies. Um, this um, webinar that we'll be doing will be mainly split into two parts, uh, which is the planning and the executing of the migration. Um, so, um, like all specified, you can post some questions um, in the chat, and then we'll start looking at answering those. Um, if it's a, a, a very immediate question that needs to be answered, we'll, um, Carl will let me know, and then we can um, attempt to answer that question. And then the other ones, we can look at answering um, at the end of the session. Um, so there's a couple of assumptions that um, we will have with this talk. Um, so the, one of the assumptions is that um, it's a technical talk um, and that you might be well familiar with cloud concepts. So we won't be delving into the basic cloud concept. Um, and I'm just assuming that you will be comfortable with that. So when we speak about um, on-premises, um, it's, it's quite important to look at that before we even consider moving to Azure. Um, so you need to first look at what do you have today um, in your data centers? What do you have in your company? Today on-premises, we might have um, virtual machines. Those VMs could be physical or bare metal. We might even have some containers. Uh, within um, the VM, you might have different work uh, nodes. So those different um, workloads that we are talking about could be application workloads, um, ones that you would use for different applications within the business um, or the company. You have database instances uh, within your uh, business. You have infrastructure services like domain controllers within your business. You might also have things like websites that are used by the corporate. Um, that could also include BDI environments. All of these different workloads uh, might be running on a VM. And you might be thinking you want to just move or lift and shift all of this into Azure. So most people would think that it's as easy as just taking your VM um, at your uh, current environment and just moving it into Azure. But Without being tempted to do that, I think it's quite important to look at the different options that you might have. It might be the easier option to just take your current VMs and move it into a cloud environment, um, but you might want to consider the different ways that are available to you before you do that as a business. So that's the one temptation that most of us have. Since we already have this workload in VMs, why not just move 
um, that the answer to Azure. So I'll, I'll try and under, make you understand why you don't want to do that at first glance. First of all, there's a variety of services that um, are offered by any cloud provider. In this instance, we were looking at Microsoft Azure. So something like infrastructure as a service uh, might come to mind when thinking about VMs in Azure. So the on-prem VMs could either be migrated or installed on Azure VMs. Um, but if you think about Azure, there's more than just um, IS, which is infrastructure as a service. There's solutions like Azure VM Work solution, which will also allow, if you're a company that's already using VMware, you can easily move your VMware into Azure. So you might need to do a quick migration and time might not be on your side, and you could maybe um, think about um, quickly moving um, your VMware into Azure. There are solutions for that within Azure. You could also consider virtual machine scale sets. Um, so scale sets are, are used to run multiple instances of your application or infrastructure based on either you are doing it manually, setting it up manually, or based on um, certain um, certain points or auto scaling that would happen. So if you have certain traffic that is hitting your, your different servers, then you auto scale based on the traffic. So that is possible with some of the services within Azure. You've also got um, AKS. Um, known as Azure Kubernetes Service, um, where you could consider Azure containers as a service. So containerization has been a very Azure has a solution for that, um, which is um, AKS, which can be scaled um, with different worker nodes as well. That is a very big uh, thing about AKS. Um, one of the interesting things about that to allow you to, to manage what you need to manage, and then Azure takes care of the rest. You've also got app services, which help you um, if you want to host HTTP-based applications. So that gives you the platform to take your HTTP-based applications and move them into Azure. You've also got uh, database services, um, and there's a whole bunch of services like um, Azure SQL Database, Manage Instances, Cosmos DB, You've got a lot of open source databases like uh, MySQL, Mongo, Maria, and um, and more. So that that will give you an idea that you you don't have to just take your VMs and move them into the cloud. There's a vast majority of offerings that Azure can give you. So most people want to just um, lift and shift, which could give you a more um, infrastructure as a service solution, but the sweet spot. I would think is towards a platform as a service, um, which could mean less for you to manage, but more work uh, to get involved in, in the beginning. So that's where you would, or most companies would like to be, and that's where the sweet spot, especially when you don't have um, the capability to run infrastructure as a service within your, your company. Um, so I think before you, you look at the target um, services within Azure, there's some questions that you really need to ask yourself, which are quite important. So we'll go into those questions now. So questions to answer before you migrate. Um, one of those questions is, um, how long do I have before I need to migrate? So if your company is so very comfortable um, within the next 12 months and you don't see a need, um, there's a different answer to the actual migration path that you would take. So if, for example, if you have three months to move because um, the data center that you're using is being decommissioned, you might not have time to modernize or re-architecture um, the actual system for you to be able to move. So that is quite important to understand, but you could have enough time to be able to move your Azure infrastructure as a service um, to VM. Or maybe if you're using VMware today, you could easily move your Azure um, to Azure VMware solution. Or maybe a, a later um, move those into platform as a service. So Azure gives you that flexibility depending on the, the certain answers. And this is not only it's not a blind approach. So for different systems that you go through in your organization, you have to pose these questions. So it's not a blanket approach that 
um, if you answer for one system, then it's um, the same answer for a different system. So this helps you as a, an organization um, that would want to migrate to Azure to understand the different systems that you have. So the other question is, is the actual system or application a strategic um, application within the business? Because it is important to um, to understand what impact would it have with what you do with the actual system. So for example, if the answer is yes, it might be worth it to modernize um, that application instead of just moving or lifting and shifting as is into the cloud. Another important question to, to consider is the total cost of ownership um, time limit. So if um, that would mean that if you might be willing to spend money today, but um, you need the return on that investment very quickly. So that is also quite important because if you if you um, invest um, on hardware today and you want that investment back in the next six months, it might be a, a different call in terms of how you go about the different uh, the migration approach. The next one is your budget, which is one of the critical things um, when you're thinking about migration. So what is my uh, budget? Is it limited? Um, is it a limited amount of funds? Um, and how much can I spend as part of this migration? So that will also inform the path that you take. The next important thing to uh, question to answer is the company strategy. So if the company is to go to platform as a service, that will drive uh, some important decision making going forward. So it's important to us to understand the company strategy with the whole cloud migration. So before uh, going into technical discussions as a organization, these questions are some of the important questions that you need to start asking yourself and to start preparing your approach um, in terms of the way forward and what you want to do next. So once the questions have, have been answered, um, they will sort of give you a certain direction in terms of the approach that you want to take. So you will hear a lot of people often talking about the five hours of migration, um, which speaks to rehost, refactor, re-architecture, rebuild, or replace. Um, so just to give you a high overview of each of, of these, so rehost is um, a very easy approach. Um, so it's one of the, the easiest to do in terms of the five hours, um, and it has less impact. So it is a lift and shift approach. Um, so it's like you taking a VM and putting it into the cloud. Um, you might be replicating it, um, or you might be reinstalling it in a VM in Azure. So there are no architecture changes required and no code change. So it's the minimal part that you can take to get your um, workload into the cloud. And the, the disadvantage of that is that there's not much gain in cloud service capabilities when you go with um, Rehost because you don't um, sort of work with some of the cloud native um, services that are offered. The second um, R is Refactor. Um, so this one is, is also um, as a service. So for example, there's very minimal or no code changes for this one. There's some tweaks uh, maybe that could be required in hosting to start to gain the benefits of cloud services. For example, um, the virtual machine on premises running a web app that some code can run in the cloud on the same app service. So if you are running a SQL Server or Postgres database on-prem, which can be hosted in Azure GCP, and you can offer a different um, service within Azure program, Azure SQL DB or MariaDB. So for Refactor, it doesn't mean that you're making a lot of um, architecture changes or code changes um, to your solution. And then the, the third one is Rearchitecture. Um, so this one is one that gets most um, software developers excited. So this is, a process where you're willing to start to make changes to your application. Uh, maybe the way your application communicates with your database. Uh, maybe you want to switch um, the databases around. So today you, you're running Oracle, but you want to move to Postgres. 
to just to also iterate again, these um, different um, migration strategies could be different pair applications. So it doesn't mean it's a blanket approach that if you are refactoring, then the next um, solution also needs to be refactored. So it's based on the questions that you might have answered in the previous slide. So you may be in terms of the architecture want to start running containers, you may be want to start running serverless, which means putting um, certain things into functions that would allow you to do that when you're looking at the architecture. So we architecture in, in sort of a summary is embracing more of a cloud architecture. So in terms of efforts and work required, it's definitely more than the sector and the host, um, but it's more cloud optimized. And some people might see a total um, cost of ownership that uh, could decrease um, as a, a, a reason behind um, the architecture. Another one which is um, very, um, might be controversial and might, depending on the appetite for the business. Um, so this one would be, you don't touch anything, you just start again. So the effort of this is way, way um, higher than the previous one. Um, and this one is also way more cloud optimized. Um, so this would um, include you rebuilding a certain functionality um, and making it um, cloud native a functionality that's ready to be shipped um, into cloud without any changes. So this would be dependent on a lot of factors and the questions that you have um, gone as a business before you decide to rebuild. Another option that you can start looking at um, is replacing. So when you speak about replays, um, so this is actually looking at software as a service. So it's very minimal. Um, there's, there's no um, code required. So think, um, for example, running SharePoint on premises, you can go to Microsoft 365 and use SharePoint Online. Um, so those are the kind of things that speak to being able to replace. So you actually not moving anything, but you're using what's currently available on the cloud. So these are the different um, strategies um, that you can uh, start looking at. But what's very important is that you need to answer the question uh, before deciding on which route you take. And this is not a blanket approach. So it's per infrastructure, per um, solution that you're looking at overall. And then you can uh, take the next step after that. So after looking at um, those strategies, what quite important is understanding what the process is. So what we were doing now, we're looking at the planning. So we are looking at, um, we said in this, um, in this webinar, we're gonna be speaking about the planning. And then once we speak about the planning, we're gonna start looking at the execution. So what do you do now? So you've done the plan and you're happy with the plan, you've answered the questions, um, you've got the budget approval, um, you've got what strategy you want to apply for which system. Now you need to start with the actual migration. So this um, is starting to look at what do I do now? So I have, and I've answered all those questions, but where do I start now with the actual migration? So I want to do the actual thing and move things over to the cloud. Where do I start? So these are the um, main things that um, are, are quite key to look at. Um, uh, in terms of an overview of the phases of the actual migration. The first one is to do some sort of spring cleaning. So that refers to cleaning up um, environments. So looking at all data, all the applications, and find systems that um, you do not need anymore. So get rid of systems that are actually not adding any business value and that you think that as a business you could do without. So that's the first thing. Before you actually look at the other phases of the migration, it's important that you, you do a, a proper spring cleaning so that you don't um, apply a lot of um, effort on things that you actually need to decommission. So that's quite important. So the next um, item is to be able to discover. So in terms of discovery, um, so you need to understand what you have. So the servers, what are they running on? What operating system are they running on? What applications um, are on those operating systems? You need to understand the hardware configuration. Um, how is it put together? So what is the performance um, of the different um, systems? 
how is the network um, put together? What is it using on premises? We usually over provision. So you usually get, um, or you usually uh, provision more than you need. Um, so you might have more CPUs than you need. And then on the cloud, um, cost based on the VM size can easily scale up. So you need to be able to discover those in the space to understand, do I actually need this um, kind of CPU um, on, on the um, servers so that you understand that you might, when you move to cloud, this is what you'll be using so that you can optimize the cost as much as you can. So the next thing that you want to, to um, look at when you're discovering is what are the dependencies? Um, and this often gets overlooked. Um, so you need to look at if you have an integration with a third-party system, um, what are those dependencies with those third-party systems? Is there going to be latency um, when I move uh, my system or my application to the cloud? That is quite important because when the systems are in one environment, you might not notice that latency between them. But the time that it would communicate, for example, if your database has moved to the cloud, but your system is still on premises, that the time it takes um, for the communication between the application and the database will be more than um, a couple of milliseconds. Um, but if you uh, were on premises and everything was on premises, you wouldn't have noticed that because the latency and everything was in one place. So the latency is a bit um, lower in that, thing, in that case. So what is quite also important is um, you don't want to move something to the cloud and leave something behind. So it is important, that's why it's important to see all those different dependencies um, that can affect performance. So the next important thing is that data um, and the app value to the business. So one of the important questions that you need to ask is, um, how important is this data and how important is this application to the business? The next uh, phase of migration is being able to um, do the actual assessment, which will look at um, the actual screens of how to do an assessment at the end. So doing an assessment will come back with the following. Um, can it actually move to the cloud um, based on what you have? Maybe it can because of the configuration and the uh, other and might be too much to move to the cloud, or maybe it's the main thing you need to able to migrate. Uh, maybe it's an things that depend on it. So you might want to understand all of those before you consider a move to the cloud. So you might want the right size, maybe um, it's provisioned on-prem. So take uh, performance information from the discovery. That's very, very important. The next uh, important um, task that you want to look at in terms of um, the actual migration is um, the actual migration process itself, which is how long is it going to take to, um, to actually migrate um, the different applications or the project. Um, so if it's a lot of projects, you need um, management to oversee those different migration of those different um, systems or apps to make sure that you sort of have a structure in place to manage how long it will take to do the actual migration. What's also important, which is under migration, is also being able to test migration. So you need to test the different networks after it's migrated, are they still functioning 100%. And then you also need to look at whether you want to do online or offline migration. And this is, is, is possible with um, Azure Migrate. And this might affect um, downtime. So if you do it offline, so you might look at when is it the optimum time to do an offline migration. If you want to do online, you can replicate it while it's running. Um, so it's possible replication while you don't have any downtime. So you need to consider those as well. And then the last one, which doesn't form part of the actual migration is the optimization part. So that one is ongoing. So it's you now on the cloud and you need to now make sure that you are planning and phasing in. And if you had items that you had moved in and you had initially planned for those to be uh, moved to more cloud native services, then you can start phasing in those things. So that's what Optimize speaks to. So it's looking at what you currently have in there, but you still want to move along. 
So one of the important things that I think a lot of um, um, technical people want to look at is the actual migrate. So how do I actually go about doing the migrate? So Azure offers a very easy way to actually do the migrate. So on the Azure portal, so you just go to uh, portal.azure.com and you just search for Azure Migrate. So in the Azure Migrate is part of the services that Azure offers. So, so think of Azure Migrate as the hub of all your migration. So it can integrate with uh, different third party tooling, but also has its own native tooling. So if you have native tooling um, that meets those requirements that's first wise, but sometimes you might need to use third party. Um, for example, there's a Unix um, server that you want to migrate. So Azure Migrate doesn't offer that, that type of capability. Then you would need to look at third party tooling to do that migration. But first price is if the requirements um, meet the native tooling. And the reason why I say that is um, first price is because um, it is free to use. So Azure Migrate is, is a free service and all of its tooling is free. So you might start paying when you start using the third party tooling. So what's also important is that um, moving from um, on-premises to Azure Migrate, you need to think about a couple of things. Um, so if you want to move from on-premises, um, there's certain um, um, items that the tooling actually gives you um, by default or out of the box. So it allows you to move your VMware. Um, it allows you to move your Hyper-V, which are both agentless. And then what it also does, it, it allows you to, um, to also move your bare metal, um, which could be from a different hypervisor, which are, um, are agent-based for the migration, but are agent-less for the assessment. So um, the other cloud as well. So if you look at my, you want to migrate from AWS or you want, want to migrate from um, GCP, um, the Azure Migrate gives you that. So it gives you that out of the box, you don't have to pay extra for that. And it also supports both uh, Windows and Linux. So like I mentioned with Unix, you might need to start using other third party tooling to be able to do that um, with uh, Unix. So what's also important is understanding um, the migration um, screen so that you see there. So you would see um, on the panel on the right hand side or left hand side, um, there's a migration goal um, which uh, speaks to the servers, the databases, and the web apps, and the data boxes. So data boxes are used uh, for migrating large storage data. If you want to do that, whether it's offline, um, but it's used to facilitate that. So to do the actual migration, you actually need um, to create a, a new project within the portal. So, so what you do is you create um, uh, the, the actual project, um, and then you select the subscription that you would be working with, and then you create the actual resource group um, or select an existing one that you want to work with, and then you give your your project a name. So whether it's uh, migrating um, uh, version one um, of a company X, then you give that name uh, to um, the project, and then you select the actual geography. So the geography is very very important especially when it comes to where the data resides. Uh, it's quite key to get that correct because you don't want, and you want to protect, um, or, or it's important to understand the data sovereignty, where your actual data is gonna be um, uh, kept. So once um, you've, you've um, actually created um, that project, you can go into different ways of actually um, creating the assessment for the database migration. So in this space, you can actually go ahead, if you are assessing the entire SQL server, um, if you can um, at scale on VMware, you can use um, Azure Migrate to get the SQL deployment recommendations. So this will give you all the nice recommendations, the target sizing, and the monthly estimates. So this helps you now to understand um, what you have on premises, and if it's compatible to what the cloud um, can offer you. And it also gives us some recommendations in terms of if there are any uh, updates that are required, if there's any patching that you need to do before you actually, can actually do this actual migration. 
And this is very important for you to understand your readiness of your actual um, migration, whether it's in the database, whether it's a server migration. So these tools um, are here to guide you. And what you see on the screen is as easy as you clicking around and you downloading um, the database migration assistant. And that you can connect to your now your database, um, whether it's locally or in a certain server, point to the database and then you run through the tool. And then it does all this automation for you and it gives you your results and your target readiness. And all of this is free with Azure Migrate. What's um, also important, what a lot of um, people also want to start looking at, especially um, people who want to look at mobile applications, is um, how do I know if my mobile application is ready to go to the cloud? So Microsoft has uh, um, an Azure App Service Migration Assistant where you just add your actual URL um, to um, that specific um, application if it's um, available on the internet. So you can assess and it will give you your, your readiness. It will tell you um, what you need um, to upgrade within that application and if it's supported within Azure and what services you can use to migrate the, the application to give you those different options. And if it's an internal application that you um, have um, within your, your domain, then you would uh, be able to download um, the, the assistant within your domain and run it internally. So it gives you that option as well. So before I end the talk, I actually want to quickly show you um, something that is quite uh, important, a tool that you can use um, to sort of understand what to do and when. So I'm just gonna stop sharing and share my browser quickly. In my browser just now. Okay, great. Uh, I am currently sharing the Azure Services Overview. So, so this wasn't mainly part of the, the, um, the webinar, but it actually helped you in terms of understanding the different um, Azure services that are out there. So what you will see here is a list of all um, the Azure services that um, are offered. And what this helps you with is that if you know that within your business, you want to start looking at a platform as a service model, then you go to platform as a service. What this will do um, as it's running in the background, so it will highlight all the different services that um, can be used as platform as a service. And then from here, what um, you can do, you can look at what you would need. And um, that's one of the use cases for this. Another important thing for this is that it can also give you reference architecture. So if I go back here, I'm gonna show you all services. And then I'll go to Uh, infrastructure. So inside here, um, it will actually show you um, the, the updates of those different services. So this is quite a handy tool if you're thinking about going to my cloud migration and you want to understand what reference actual, um, architectures are out there, the customer stories that are out there, what companies have done um, in that, um, the regions that, that service is available in. Um, so if you click on, for example, the reference architecture, so it will take you to a space whereby you can see now the different reference architectures um, that have been used for those different services. So if you click on securely managed web app, it will open um, a page where you can see the actual reference architecture um, for that. So based on the services that you have selected, it will give you the reference architecture for that. And you can start looking at what might be good for your company. So that's, that's quite a, a cool a tool um, that is um, easy to use, um, that is quite intuitive as well, that will help a lot of um, people that um, are not very really familiar or don't understand where they can start with the journey to moving to Azure. Awesome. Uh, 
And so we go back to my presentation. Great. Uh, that is it for my side call. I'm happy to start looking at any questions that um, are available. Fantastic, Lenoir. But thank you for going through that. It was pretty comprehensive and pretty insightful for a tech session. Thank you so much for doing that. To our audience, if you would, in the interim, please, if you have questions, please raise those in our chat window, and I will pick those up there and then close those through to Lamuaba for you. In the meantime, Lamuaba, while our audience are thinking about what they would like to ask you, perhaps my question for you, first one today, is in terms of migrations, what are the things that people are often caught by, or what are the key risks that you've seen in terms of undertaking migration? Okay, great. Call. So one of the um, things that I've noticed is that a lot of people sort of overcomplicate the migration process itself. So some people might look at the current environment and look at what they have and want to sort of re-architect the whole environment before moving to cloud not knowing that um, you don't need um, to sort of rewrite all your systems to be able to move them to the cloud. So that's one of the things that I've noticed is that there's a fear because of the unknown that my solution won't be able to run on the cloud. So I'd rather not even embark on this journey. Okay. And I, I think in that space, there, there's also that difference, I suppose, between the migration process and then app modernization in order to make the most of being on a cloud platform like Azure. Could you just elaborate on that for our audience just to make that distinction clear between those two aspects? 100%. So if I go back to the slide that you spoke about, which mainly speaks to this. So I think it's um, the, the five hours of migration. So in terms of I'm um, looking at actual um, modernization or re-architecture of your system. So within this five hours, you would be looking at re-architecture or rebuild. So with regard to re-architecture, you would be looking at if your system, for example, is currently a monolithic system um, that uh, is, um, you would like to break down into multiple services. So what you could do is you could take that monolithic system and start chopping down the different services so you start building services around that system and deploying those services as um, serverless functions in the cloud, which would execute um, the different services that you would need. So that's where app modernization might play a role. So you have a system that you want to maybe, for example, upgrade. So it's using a very old version of .NET, of .NET and you want to move to .NET Core, then you can start looking at, okay, I need to first upgrade to .NET Core, and then I, I need to implement um, a microservices within the solution. So app modernization sort of speaks to a wide variety of things. So it could be upgrading a certain version of the technology. It could be re-architecturing the whole solution from monolith to microservices. And then the other one, which is um, where I said you could um, sort of rehost. So you could move your virtual machines as they are on premises and move them to Azure. So that would be if in that in that case you don't have um, let's say the skill to uh, do app modernization, then you can embark on just moving your know, virtual machines as they are with your applications as they are running into um, Azure VM. And that doesn't mean that it's as easy as just uh, lifting them and moving them. You might need to install certain things within Azure to make sure that your VMs are running in the same configuration. Okay, and, and I guess that also points to how a migration onto Azure or, or any of the other cloud platforms really does take a bit of a team combination in order to do that. 100%. You need your architects in the application, you need your Azure platform specialist, you need obviously the change management within the business, et cetera, to cover that side of things. And then you need the administration component within the team afterwards to actually manage those environments. In, in your experience, Lanwa, what, what's kind of been the successful team composition that you've put together in order to successfully undertake an Azure migration? Awesome, thanks, Carl. So in terms of um, an Azure migration, let's say for a full system that you want to move from on-premises um, to Azure with very nice well, um, uh, bells and, 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 
and nice things on top, you would definitely, first of all, need to have an understanding of what you want to move it to. So that would require someone with an architect view of the different services that Azure offers. So the first person you would need is an architect to sort of look at the landscape to say, this is what you have on-prem, this is what you could have on Azure. So the architect sort of gives you a blueprint of what you can actually do on Azure. So that's the first person you would need. The second person um, you would definitely need is an administrator. So the administrator would sort of be the person who starts setting up those different policies. So if you have um, your finance team, you have your accounting team, you have your marketing team, so they would be able to set up those different um, policies within your different tenants within Azure. So you can have different tenants for your different um, uh, departments, depending on how the um, solution architect had envisioned the whole layout. So your administrator would be very key in doing that, in laying out the different uh, permissions, the different, um, I would say, access control measures within the system. And then the next person that uh, would be key in that, in, in this, is, is working with the administrator is obviously the finance people because they need to have a view of the numbers within the system. So they need to understand what is happening in the billing aspects of the actual Azure platform. So they need to have access to that to see what billing is happening each and every month. So you would need someone from the finance team to have access to that. And what's also important now after that is to have the people from the development side, so the developers as well, because they might be needing to uh, sort of modernize certain systems and move them into Azure. So they need to understand what is available within Azure, looking at the diagram that the uh, architect has put together. They will be able to see the different services now that they can move into Azure. So the developers are also quite important in that aspect in putting together now the different pieces that um, have been laid out by the architecture. And then the, um, the next important um, item would be someone who looks at the now because the developers would be working with the code. So someone to make sure that um, there's automation in place, um, to make sure that um, there's seamless um, CI CD, which is continuous integration, continuous deployment in, 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 in the actual solution. So you would need someone with a DevOps experience. So you need some DevOps within the team as well to make sure that that um, is also covered. And then obviously from a testing perspective, you need um, your testers to be able to now once those services have been deployed um, and now are functioning within the, um, the environment, they can be testable. So you need someone with the technical testing capabilities, whether it's both automation or manual testing, um, to be able to um, do the testing from now an Azure uh, service perspective of the deployed uh, system. So those are some of the key individual players that you would need. And obviously you would need your, your business analyst um, before your architect to also understand those requirements before you move into um, this territory that might be unknown for others. So you need someone with those to understand the requirements for um, certain um, projects or certain applications and how those requirements will be fulfilled by moving into Azure. And then obviously you would need someone to orchestrate um, the whole team to go put the whole team together which would be um, the Scrum Master to be able to have a day-to-day -day view of what is happening, what is needed, and, and how to solve issues that come about in, in the everyday um, process of, of moving the solution to cloud. I guess that's the thing, is, is that I'm sure that most of the folks that are on the session today as, as technologists of, of one sort or another appreciate the complexity of a move in platforms like that but it's the, the planning that really needs to go into it in order to ensure success in this space because there are so many moving parts and there are so many stakeholders that need to be a part of that process. 100%. And I think that's um, why I also um, sort of spoke to the planning a lot in this, in this presentation because without a solid plan, you, you might uh, go in, in a very wrong direction very fast because there is some uh, thing that is called legacy cloud. So you could quickly get a legacy cloud without, if you don't plan uh, uh, correctly, um, and if you don't um, sort of follow um, sort of a, a detailed plan into what you want to achieve in the cloud as well. And um, those strategic company overview in terms of what of the company going forward is with regards to cloud. 
So that's quite important. And then in terms of planning as well, it is quite important to also um, know the limitations within the business as well. So you don't want to say, let's go into cloud, but you don't um, have individuals that understand um, cloud as well as a service and what it's supposed to be, the benefits and the drawbacks, because as each and everything that we, our services that we would um, be using has drawbacks. So you need to also understand those disadvantages um, that would be there in terms of going to cloud. For example, if you provision something that you're not going to be using, your your cost can quickly escalate. So understanding those negatives as well is quite key in the planning process. Fantastic. So, oh, but I, you raised a good point there in terms of knowing what is available and what's on offer and the options that are there. For for our audience, probably more on the technical side. Where do you point them at in order to start their journey in terms of understanding? You've already got a number of Azure certifications that you've completed, but for someone that's going right, that might be the direction we're heading in and I need to know more about it. Where, where do they start? Sure, sure. So I think what, what's quite important is to, to first understand before you look at cloud, right? So if you are an individual that's in the IT space, so you might need to sort of have an understanding of uh, things like networking, um, have an, a thing of understanding of things like servers, um, understanding of uh, applications in general, um, understanding of things like authentication or active directory. So I think that that's very fundamentally important to first look at. And then once you have sort of an understanding of those, then you can start looking at um, the Azure fundamentals. So Azure fundamentals sort of gives you um, an overview of what Azure does, but what it it won't do, it won't tell you what networking is. It, it won't tell you what um, a, a virtual machine is. So those fundamentals are also important for you to understand. So what Azure fundamentals will do, it will give you a very um, high level overview um, of what Azure um, has to offer without going into deep um, knowledge of what is out there within Azure. And then once you've got those fundamentals, then you've got um, different uh, avenues that you can take. Um, I spoke about um, the need for an administrator. So, so you can look at a course, which is an Azure um, administrator course, which is AZ-104. And um, so the Azure Administrator Associate certification would be speaking to someone who would uh, function as what I spoke about in terms of looking at um, networking, looking at um, policies, looking at identity management. So that person would be looking at identity and security, looking at um, sort of your IS, which is infrastructure as a services, which is your networking, your TCP, IP, and all of that. And then the other part that you can take, um, you can take the Azure Developer Associate part. So in that part, you go into more Um, app services, which includes um, Azure Functions, which includes um, your databases. So it gives you sort of perspective of what you should be able to look at within Azure. And then once you've got those two associates or one of those, then you can start looking at other applications. And this will give you now a view of what Azure DevOps does and understanding the different CICD ways of doing um, things. If you look at the architecture space, then you can look at um, the Azure and services and more in depth um, journey within Azure. So there's definitely different um, specifications and different parts for different. Um, capabilities and different uh, sort of skill sets. So it's quite flexible in that way. And it doesn't limit you. So if you're doing Azure administrator, you can do Azure developer and get both of those, but you wouldn't be able to get that the expert level without doing um, either the administrator or the developer. So it's quite important to get those fundamentals before you get into the more in-depth knowledge of the different um, services that are on offer. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to remind our audience that if you've got any questions specifically that you'd like to pose to Lanwaba, please drop those into the chat window. Um, Lanwaba, maybe just again, while we wait for any further questions from our team, 
the the one thing that you would say watch out for this when you conduct a migration what what would that one thing be so the one thing you need to definitely watch out is your networking so that is a lot of um your ip addressing and all of that so it, it tricks a lot of people when you need to migrate from your on-prem into azure so it is important to understand um what type of networking you want to give if you will be uh, managing that by yourself so if you go with um your infrastructure as a service it is vital that you understand how you want to do your, your networking which includes um your your vnet how do you want to set those up which includes your 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 security within your network how do you want to expose um your services to the external world so networking is the one thing that usually catches people out and i think that's why azure has decided with uh, to come out with this new certification which is az 700 which focuses on um, networking very in depth which they didn't have before fantastic all right i see that no one else has raised questions probably because i've been abusing all your time and asking all my questions <laughs> Awesome. Um, I've got one question though from Lawrence that's asking, he, he, Lawrence doesn't yet have any Azure experience and he's interested yeah. in the, the fundamental Azure course. He's asking the question, is it worth doing the exam to get certified once you've done the course? So it, I think it, it, uh, it's mainly for myself, it was for just for ego. Um, so if you have an understanding of what is happening, so uh, for me, it was just for bragging rights, but um, for you, Lawrence, if you want to sort of have an understanding so you can do um, the learning um, of what uh, it means to have uh, the Azure fundamentals under your belt, um, and then go and write the exam just for fun, just to, to test yourself on how much you actually learn. So I would definitely say it is worth it. Um, it, it does help. Um, for you to also have that those ready right. And Damien's come back with a, a resounding yes to Lawrence's question as well. <laughs> Damien as our executive responsible for project services and, and spaces such as DevOps and migration in that in that case. It's definitely a yes in terms of consulting organizations that look at people's resumes to go, well, do you have the knowledge in this space? And certifications like the Azure certification can certainly go a long way towards differentiating you from other applicants for particular roles. That obviously combined with experience is probably the two main factors. So, so Lawrence from the rest of DVT side would probably say, yes, do the course and yes, do the certification to show that you basically have that knowledge now that is part of what you bring and value in terms of your consulting capability. Longwaba, we're, we're right on 12 o'clock. I think we, we've had a great session. Thank you so much for what you've covered today and, and for sharing your knowledge in this space. I'm sure that's been valuable to everybody that attended today. To our audience, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the questions, Lawrence and others. And I do hope that we will see you again in the near future at one of our next DVT Tech Insight sessions. The session has been recorded and we will post that up there. So if you do want to come back to it and hear what Lonwaba had to say once again, that will be available to you from our website. Lonwaba, thank you again, sir. Maybe you can just say goodbye to our audience. And again, awesome. perhaps just share your, your email contacts. So if anybody's got any direct questions, they could send that through to you at DBT. Yeah? 100%. Um, so you can just email me, um, Alan Sinde, um at jhb, at jhb .dvt um for any emails, or you can just reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, and then in terms of uh, just a final uh, thank you note to everyone watching the session, and um, just to everyone who's thinking about looking at Azure or getting started with Azure, I definitely say you won't go wrong. Um, and in terms of what's available and what's there to learn, you'll definitely find something that will excite you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining our session. We'll see you again at the next one.